Items you can get from Poundland for the radio hobby by Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 metres and PMR 446. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 metres and PMR 446, or if you just want to have a quick matter with me on the older CB here. You could just call me the Red Squirrel if you like. <laughs> just using a different headset today because I don't have the wireless mic with me at the moment, that's at home for technical reasons, which I am working on sorting out. So today I'm paying a visit to the local Poundland here in Catrick Garrison to see what I can find in there that would be of use to the radio enthusiast, whether it be um, uh, whether you be an amateur, CB, uh, if you like playing around with PMR446, you definitely can get something in there for playing around with PMR446, um, or even if you're just a shortwave listener. So I believe they sell headphones and things as well, so <laughs> all nice and cheaply. Um, usually a maximum of five pound, even though it's called pound land, not everything in there costs a pound. Some things cost two pound, some things cost five pound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and uh, have a look and see what's what. You might be able to see a, another camera just off to the side here. I'm recording also a bit of behind the scenes footage for the Patreon page. So if you want to support my work you're more than welcome to you just go onto the patreon page there should be a link in the description below but without further ado we're going to go into poundland and have a look and see what we can find in there that us radio enthusiasts could actually use ah oh, they're playing music in here but i think it's uh, like um, uh, royalty free so it might be okay so we've got some uh, uh charging cables here so and headphones, so uh, they could be quite useful, and aux cables, so, you know. Sounds like a good one. Aux cable. The USB cables for charging devices, because I know a lot of the cheap Chinese radios have uh, micro USB chargers on them these days, which is good. Right, let's see what else I can find. Yep, they have tools as well for all those little projects. Including tape measures, very good for making tape measure yaggies with. So, <laughs> they're, actually those are the type that I, you, I used one of those specifically for my two, two meter tape measure yagi and it worked quite well. Let's just bring that microphone up a bit closer so you can hear me better. Cable ties, we all need cable ties, Allen keys, torches, they do actually have um, a, a bit more of a selection. Precision screwdrivers, hacksaws, normal screwdrivers, <laughs> so wrenches. Yeah, so you can basically do all, do all your projects using tools from in here. That's quite good. Magnifying glasses, I've got one of these. Very useful to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think they could be useful as well for for amateur and other radio projects. So I've got more headphones. More cables for connecting up devices. These more aux cables. Reasonable selection of headphones. Bluetooth speakers, but they'd probably work with network radios. Phone holders might handle a small, lightweight radio. Car chargers, because as I said before, a lot of uh, the Chinese, small, really small Chinese radios can charge off a USB. So, I came in here actually looking for a power bank. Not these disposable power pod chargers. Because they've got cells in them that you can actually use so if you can find them buy one because you can actually um, just remove the cell from it and repurpose it provided you can put a protection circuit on it or repair um, uh, an old battery off a radio that's not what i came in here looking for i came in here looking for power banks which they don't appear to have any in as they do I've got one of these already, I do need another one, so I'm going to buy one of these whilst I'm in here. They probably have no charge in it whatsoever, these never do. So that's what I'm going to buy. So I need that for something else. But these will work for charging some of the little Chinese radios. Or you can just have the cells out of it and repair them a, a battery. Ah, very good. Something else that's useful, so if you like to do your portable operations, is these bungee cords. I do have a couple of these at home. I have loads of bungee cords in the car as well, which is 
very useful. There's <laughs> a little USB reading light just in there, which is quite useful as well if you want want to um, uh, use 5 volts and light up um, uh, portable operations in the dark, rather than use something a bit noisy like a generator or something. So, uh, yeah. Now here's something for the people who want to train for the full license. Cheap scientific calculator, because you do actually need a scientific calculator for that license level. Might help to have one for the intermediate as well. Uh, normal calculator as well, if you're like me and maths is a bit rubbish. I do actually have one of these calculators, but I have a Casio one as well, which I actually used for the full. So, there you go. It's um, a cheap calculator, although I paid a lot more for the Casio one. <laughs> I'm not going to um, tell you how much I paid for that. <laughs> Stationery in general. Because pens and pencils are also quite useful. And sharpies for those projects. <laughs> All the good permanent markers are available. Of course. <laughs> I have to say that. Glue guns and super glue for all those um, uh, projects that you might want to do. <laughs> Metal hooks, but I wouldn't exactly um, want to use them to hang any antenna wires with. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Plenty of stuff in here. And here's something else I spotted, um, some wire twist ties for plants, uh, it's steel core inside, might make for a good antenna, possibly a receiving one, I'm not sure whether it would work well for transmit, so it looks as though that would work, especially for your shortwave listeners out there who want a long wire antenna in a garden, <laughs> it's green so it kind of blends in, it's quite useful. Okay so I'm back at home now and one thing I didn't cover whilst I was in Poundland was the fact that they sell batteries packs like this. This is a set of AAA batteries and there's a set of AA batteries. These are quite good batteries as well and the, for those old 1980s CBs that require about 8 or, or 10 batteries depending on what they are, you can actually buy enough alkaline batteries for, for those from Poundland for relatively low cost. So you can run them off these batteries and they'll be fine. My realistic TRC-1007 is a very good example of that. Uh, remember that that would be eight of these. You can't put ten of these in because it would overvolt it and damage it. So it's always eight of these. I'm just trying to get my hand in the way. A couple of power banks I picked up as well because I do have uses for those. The, so you can use these in the old 1980s handheld CBs if you've got one that works and you do use it would also work in other 1980 CBs that run off batteries such as the, the Midland Porter Pack and anything else that takes uh, AA alkaline batteries. So there are some portable amateur radios that do as well. I believe um, uh, I think the FT817 and FT818 by Yesu have that option. So uh, the AAAs are useful as well. So if you've got one of the um, uh, uh, DAPnet pagers, you can just pop one of those batteries in, it'll last a while. They claim, it claims a 6 or 12 times more power depending on the size, but I'm, I think that's just a marketing gimmick. But they're otherwise good. These power banks are useful either A, as the whole power bank for some of the latest crop of small, usually UHF uh, Chinese radios that can charge off of USB. So you can probably charge them off these. Or for the 18650 cells that are inside these, uh, although, having said that, you have to make sure they're matched before you make a, a pack of them up. So, and also to have protection, there is that. So, there's just a little overview of what the radio ham could potentially use at Pound, Poundland, or just radio enthusiasts in general, short wave listeners even, could buy the little garden wire that I've mentioned and maybe make an antenna out of that. That's an experiment I'm going to try when, I, when I've got um, uh, enough time and money and... The, the other bits that I'm probably going to need to even do that, like um, uh, balance and ladder line and things, and also an HF transceiver. <laughs> so that's something that's worth a try. Um, it is steel wire, so I'm not sure how well that would work compared to copper wire. So, so these, these power banks, are, like I say, also useful if you want to charge up your, your mobile phone, say you uh, need to use your mobile phone for some amateur radio related purpose, or even a net charge a network radio up with these. My network radio takes a USB charging cable, so you can charge a network radio up. How much by, I don't know, but it will work for that. Um, so, yeah, I completely forgot about the network radio, guys. So, <laughs> I shouldn't forget about you. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a look at what you can get from Poundland, which is a shop where things are usually about £1, £2 or £5. The equivalent in the Republic of Ireland 
and the Isle of Man, and I'm guessing Northern Ireland as well, but don't quote me on that, is Deals, which is D-E-A-L-Z, Deals. It's the same company as Poundland, but I think uh, the Pound stuff actually costs £1.20 on the Isle of Man. I'm not 100% sure, but <laughs> I know someone on YouTube that would, would know that answer better, and that would be Big Clive. <laughs> because he tends to get a lot of things from Poundland, and if you want to see what's inside that power bank and that power bank, just look for bigclive.com. <laughs> Thought I'd give a little um, uh, nudge in, in his direction, because his channel's actually pretty good. <laughs> so, that's pretty much Pound Poundland covered for now. I don't think I can cover it anymore at the moment. Uh, there are other things you could probably get from in there as well, like LED light strings, just to get the LEDs out of, because LEDs are good in projects or just even for the components, I suppose. Uh, the garden lights, there are inductors in them, but obviously those inductors might not be of much use in an RF environment. I'm not 100% sure. Depends on how well they're rated. <laughs> so, so if, you, if you need anything from Poundland, then I recommend it. I'm not trying to advertise Poundland. I'm just trying to show you what you as a radio amateur can get. <laughs> so there are other pound shops available, I suppose, and dollar stores and uh, uh, euro stores, I suppose, for our friends in, in Europe. I'm not sure if such a thing actually exists in Europe, whether the concept has taken off over there. Although I did mention that Deals operates in the Republic of Ireland, so that would probably be about one euro. So. Yeah, so it's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 metres and PMR 446. Or if you catch me on the CB, you could just call me the Red Squirrel if you like. So, if you need batteries for your 1980s handheld CB radio, or even uh, more recent ones like the, the, Mid the Midland 42, because that can take the, these dry cells, and the Intec H520 Plus, the, although that's not no longer in production, but I, but I do actually have... Two of them, one's a scrap chassis, unfortunately. So, you can buy batteries for those. Um, I think uh, some of the other handhelds may have the capacity, handheld CBs may have the capacity to take these batteries as well, although don't quote me on that. Uh, so, yeah, so good source of batteries for that 1980s handheld CB that takes more batteries than cents. <laughs> yeah, and also means to charge up uh, the cheap Chinese radios and some of the network radios, and bits to make antennas and other projects for for the discerning radio enthusiast. So, I was, I was planning on going down there anyway to buy the, buy these things, so, these. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd just do a little bit of filming there, just to show what you can actually get in Poundland if you want to do a radio project and you don't want to spend too much money. So, 7-3 for now, and I'll catch you in the next one, and if you do like my work and you want to help towards the channel and make it a wee bit better, don't forget, check out my Patreon. And if you, if you don't want to put any money into pay, Patreon, then you don't have to. So that's, that's up to you. I'm not saying you have to do it. It's your choice at the end of the day. Don't spend more than what you can afford, especially in these times. So I'm free for now, guys. <laughs>